Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the fundamentals of control systems. Today we're going to talk about linear approximations of nonlinear systems. I'm Gus and this is Endless Engineering, so let's dive right in. Let me start out with talking about what it means to have a linear system, right? A system that is linear is a system who has two fundamental properties. The first one is superposition. Uh, and that means position, and that means that given a certain input x1 and another input x2, if I had a system y is equal to f of x, right, then the output y1, which is equal to f of x1, and the output y2 is equal to f of x2, Right? If I add those two, y1 plus y2, then I should get the same thing as f of x1 plus x2. Right? That's what it means to have superposition or an additive system. So again, if I have two inputs and I compute the outputs for each input individually, then I compute the output for the summation of both inputs then I can equate the output of each input individually with the output of the summation of both inputs. That's the property of superposition. The other property is being a homogeneous system. Uh, and that, what that typically means is that you have a uh, input x and I scale that input by some alpha, alpha x. So then f of alpha x, let's call that y, Right, or let's call that let's call this x1 and y1 again, right? So this is y1 in this case, and I should be able to say y1 should be equal to alpha times f of x1. So the idea of uh, a, a system being homogeneous or homogeneous, depending on how you want to pronounce it, is that if you had a real valued scalar alpha and you scaled your input then the output of that scaled input should be equal to the scaling of the output of that input, right? So I have an input x1, I scale it and I get the output for it, y1. That should be equal to alpha times the output of that input without the scaling. So these two properties tell me that I have a linear system. And typically, you'll hear people say that it is basically a system whose relationship between the input and output is linear. But this is the mathematical definition for it. So let's look at an example for this. Let's say y is equal to x, right? Let's call this example 1, right? y is equal to x. Now, is this a linear system? Now, you can look at it and see that the relationship is linear. If you were to draw this relationship on a... Uh, line, you'd see that it looks like this, it's linear. But from a linear system's perspective, we have to show that it, you can apply superposition or that it's an additive system and uh, that it is a homogeneous system. And it's true for both, right? If I had an x1, then y1 would be equal to x1. And if I had a x2, y2 would be equal to x2, right? And then if I did y of 1, 2, which is equal to y of x1 plus x2, right? That would be equal to y1 plus y2, right? So I've proven that it is uh, an additive system. The same thing for homogeny, uh, for, for, uh, for, a homogeneous, for it to be homogeneous is if I say that y is equal to alpha x1, that is also equal to alpha times y1, right? Where y1 is in this case x1, and this y is alpha times um, x1. So there you have it. This is a linear system by our mathematical definition. What if we looked at another example? Example two here um, says that I have y is equal to x squared, right? So look at, let's look at x squared. The, is it, can I apply superposition? Is it a additive system? Let's find out. So y1 is equal to x1 squared and y2 is equal to x2 squared, right? I have an input x1, I uh, um, plug it in here, I get y1. I have an input x2, plug it in here, I get y2. Now y1 plus y2 is equal to 
x1 squared plus x, x2 squared. Now, is this equal to the output of x1 plus x2? Let's find out. So if my, if my input was x1, was x1 plus x2, then y, let's call it 1, 2, is equal to x1 plus x2 all squared, right? Now, is this equal to x1 squared plus x2 squared? The answer is no, right? If you expand out this term, you'll see that x1 squared plus 2x1 x2 plus x2 squared, which is expanding this term right here, does not equal to x1 squared plus x2 squared, right? So this system is not linear, right? And you don't say it's not linear, you typically say it's a nonlinear system. And unfortunately, a lot of the systems in the real world are nonlinear. However, if you look at an operating region around some certain point or a certain region of operation for the system, you could approximate it as a linear system. And there's a way to do that. The way to do that is to use the Taylor series expansion. So in our example, we have y is equal to x squared, right? We've shown that that's a nonlinear system. To linearize it, like I said, we can do the Taylor series expansion around a point. Now, the Taylor series says that you can approximate a function y the following way. You can compute y at x0, which is the point at which you want to linearize the function about. And you can then add to onto it an infinite number of terms based on the derivative uh, of that function around that point. So in this case, the derivative of um, y with respect to x at x naught times x minus x naught divided by one factorial. There's more, let me just do that. There are more terms here. Then I do the second derivative of y with respect to x at x naught times x minus x zero squared divided by two factorial and so on with some higher order terms. So in this case, I'm approximating the function as an infinite series. Now you can pick one element, two elements of that series, and it would be a good enough approximation. In this case, we have this function, like this is x and this is y. So y is x squared. So let's say I take an operating point here, x naught, and I linearize about it, so I get a line here. So you can see within some bound here, I'm still close enough. I mean, this is obviously an exaggerated uh, plot or whatever, but you can see that within some region, I'm still close enough to the actual function. So in this case, if we take x squared and we substitute these values, we'll say that y is approximately equal to y, y at x zero. The first derivative of x squared is x. So and substitute x zero here, you get x zero times x minus x0 divided by 1, which is the factorial of, uh, of 1. And then here I have some extra terms. Uh, I will say the second derivative is actually, um, sorry, the first derivative here is 2x, right? 2x0. Uh, the second derivative is 2. And then I multiply it by x minus x0 squared divided by 2 factorial, which is 2. So this 2 cancels out with this 2, right? and plus, you know, higher order terms. So what I do here, I took the, the first derivative of the function itself, which will be 2x, and I substituted x0, so I have this term here. And then I took the second derivative of this function, which would be 2, and I multiplied it by x minus x0 squared, uh, divided by 2, so that 2 cancels out with that 2. So in our case, let's just take a um, uh, first order approximation. So I'm going to say that y is equal to y zero, y at x zero plus two x zero times x minus x zero. So in this case it's two x zero x minus two x zero squared. So this is my linear approximation of y, the function which is x squared. 
right? And you can see this is a constant, which is around the operating point. This is also a constant. So I'm left with this term here, right? And I can show that this is a linear system by applying the concepts of additive or superposition solutions. I show that this is a the first condition for being a linear system. The second one, I can show that it is a, hom a, a homogeneous system. If I, if I satisfy those two, then it's a linear system. You can go ahead and prove that to yourself by doing that as an exercise. But let, let's look here at like putting some numbers. So say I approximate this function at x0 equal to 2. Right? So then I have y is equal to uh, y at x0, which is in this case 4 plus 2 times x0, which is 2, so that's 4, x, and then I have minus 2 times x0 squared. 2 times x0 squared, so x0 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. So essentially it's 4x minus 4, right? So that's the equation for my linear system, linearized about the x0 point, which is equal to 2. Now, why did I pick 2 here? That's just as an example to show you what the function would actually look like. In reality, you would analyze your system, and we're going to talk about this in later videos, to show that there are certain points around which you'd like to linearize your system. They would be points of interest, and they're points where the system behaves in a way that you find is useful for your application. So you could be operating within a region um, where your system properties are linear. So say, for example, you have uh, some sort of hydraulic actuator or some sort of hydraulic element in your system, and you know that given a certain pressure or a certain velocity of that hydraulic fluid, the behavior is nonlinear for the response in the system. So you would want to pick a point for some of these numbers that to make sure that the system operates in a linear way so that it gives you a linear system. And the reason why we like to have linear systems is because they're generally nice to deal with mathematically. There are nice uh, solutions for the response of a linear system. They're also easy to use for designing a controller. Um, remember, we're going to deal with linear systems here in all this, these, uh, uh, these videos, and we're going to design controllers for linear systems. Nonlinear controller design is a completely different world. It requires completely different mathematical tools and a whole set of other things so that you can deal with the nonlinearities in the system and be able to analyze them. So now let's look at a numerical example here that shows us how far away we are from the actual function itself. So say I want to find y at x equals to 2, right? If I use the linear system approximation, then I can say it's um, 4 times 2 minus 4, right? So that's 8 minus 4, and I get what? Um, I get uh, 4, right? Which is going to be exactly equal to x squared, right? x squared is 4. This is because I'm operating exactly at the operating point. But what about if I do y is equal y at uh, x equals to 3? So that's going to be approximately 4 times 3 minus 4. And that's, a pro that's, that's equal to 12 minus 4 is 8. Correct? And what if I take 3 squared? I get 9, right? 4 times 3 is 12, minus 4, you get 8. But when I do 3 squared, I get 9. So you can see I am incurring an error here, right? The error is the further away I move from my operating point, the more error I accumulate. And that's the trade-off here, that if I operate far away from my operating point or my linearization point, then I start to incur a larger and larger error. So it's up to you as a user or as a designer of a controller or as someone who's analyzing the system to figure out how far away you need to operate from your operating point or to figure out what the operating point that you need to linearize about. And that's typically system related. You'd have to study your system, understand it, and figure out what parts of the system, what elements of your system need to be working in some region. Say, for example, you have hydraulic fluid in your system. 
And given a certain pressure and velocity of that fluid, it starts to behave in a nonlinear way. It gives you a nonlinear response. So you need to figure out what values of pressure and velocity would give you the linear response, and that would be your linearization point. I hope you enjoyed this video on linear approximation of nonlinear systems. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button to show your support. And think about subscribing to Endless Engineering and hitting the notification bell. That way YouTube gives you notification every time we roll out a new video. Thank you for watching.